two, three, four, five point four four to every one spin out of the tail housing on your transfer case. Hey guys, this is Nate with Bleepin' Jeep. Today we're gonna put a Atlas four-speed transfer case in my TJ. Here we've got the NP231, um, and then this is the Atlas four-speed. If you get the Atlas two-speed, it doesn't come with this extra planetary box on the front. In order to make it to where this didn't get too long, uh, I got the competition tail housing, and the competition tail housing does not have a speedometer. If we measure from the mounting surface back to the center of our yoke, we're at just about 16 inches or so. On this, where it's a flange style, I don't have the new drive shaft, so I can't measure to the center of the yoke, but I can go from mounting surface to the face of the yoke, and we're at about 15 inches. The way they manufacture these is to be a direct um, bolt-in to a whole bunch of different applications, one being the TJ. So I put everything for the TJ twin stick on this side all the hardware and various components. I unboxed some of the bigger stuff so we can kind of see what we're working with. And then I put the four-speed planetary cable shifter stuff on this side. I'm gonna install this bracket first, it's for the cable shifter, and it goes underneath this bracket, which is for these. So in order to do that, you have to shift the case uh, into low range. So we're gonna shift gently these into low range. I'm just gonna lightly tap these into low range. There we go. Perfect. Now this is gonna sandwich on top. Let's make sure we can focus on those. Boop. It's got these three mounting holes that are what's gonna actually hold the bracket onto the T-case. Now this transfer case is gonna be installed into a diesel. Diesels are a little rattly. Um, I've owned a lot of diesels, which has made me a pretty big fan of red Loctite. These three bolts that are gonna be going into uh, and holding this housing together, I'm definitely gonna be putting some lock, red Loctite on. Next, we need to press these two bushings into this shift lever. You've got this, what they call a barrel, and a barrel retainer, and uh, this goes on the end of your cable. You thread it on there, they said about halfway, so we'll just kind of guesstimate halfway. This goes into the back of this shifter housing, just like that, see how those match up? And then you've got these little button heads. They get threaded in. Like so. We're gonna be threading this little heim joint into the end of the cable. This little heim joint is gonna thread into the end of our shift rod. And then the shift rod is gonna end up going up through the housing. And this will be inside the Jeep. The, uh, the, the body is going to get sandwiched in between this lower housing. <clears throat> and then this is going to come up through and get topped off with a shift knob. The other side of the cable has a similar Heim joint, but a little bit different in the fact that it doesn't have the little bolt pre-pressed in there. This is going to go on this side. I'm sure you can recognize this shape. So this is going to get sandwiched in there the same exact way. Go through there get sandwiched in, and then it's gonna get bolted down. So I can see that I'm gonna have about a quarter inch of threads um, into the heim, which will probably be just fine. But since we know that we have so much adjustment, I'm gonna thread this in, and then I'd like to have closer to like half an inch or so of threads. So boom, that's probably half an inch of threads. We'll just kind of finger tight this jam nut. And then we can, since this is still loose, I can adjust cable and I'm going to tighten this down and bring this in and you can see those two holes getting closer and closer together there we go that's pretty dang close to where we're going to need to be now um, I'm going to tighten this jam nut on the cable adjustment and I will tighten these two bolts and then I can throw in this little button head right here so it's kind of hard to push once I tighten all this stuff up and make it nice and solid, I bet it's gonna get a lot easier. Not to mention filling this with fluid and actually starting to use it and breaking everything in. A little bit of wear usually will help things shift better too. Well, I got the first portion installed 
Uh, this is basically set up to where they give you more than you need and then you cut it down to whatever your needs are. Put these bolts through here. You install the shifters on. So this one's going to go on this side. That one's going to go on that side. And then you use these other chunks of all thread. They're going to be going between the bottom of the shifter and this guy right here. And that's all connected with these. This is basically just mocked up. We're going to bolt this into the Jeep without any of this linkage in the way. And then I'm going to try to loosely fit all this to make sure it's going to come up through the floor correctly. Um, I put all these knobs and stuff on here just so you can kind of see what the finished product is without a Jeep being wrapped around it. You have a stick that controls the front axle and a stick that controls the rear axle. There's R for rear, F for front. And you can see where it says low, neutral, high, low, neutral, high. This gives you the ability to do what's called a front dig if you'd like. You can take the front axle, put it in low or high, the rear axle, put it in neutral, and you can just use your front axle to dig around obstacles. What's even cooler is because of this planetary, we can put this into low, and then whenever we're in Johnson Valley or we're in Moab or we're somewhere where you're doing some crazy rocks or some crazy inclines, you're not using the crap out of your clutch like I've experienced at King of the Hammers and I've experienced at Easter Jeep Safari. I did a test fit on my studs. I threaded them in there just far enough to where they're not going to bend or tweak out on me when I try to put this in there. I'm going to make sure that that orientation is going to work and that it's going to be clocked in a way that's going to work too. Before I get this transfer case mounted, I will have to drill some holes to the floor. And I think that that shifter um, for the planetary is going to end up somewhere in this area. That's what we came up with. Got the holes all drilled. It's in the same location that they show in this picture coming up for a TJ, so I'm hoping that everything clears. It looks like our hole's like right in line to where it'll come up on one side of the uh, center console and on the other side of the parking brake. And this is adjusted to where this is all the way into high right now, so at least it, it's not so far forward it's going to hit anything. Both surfaces are mated. I'm going to thread these nuts on and uh, just kind of get them somewhat tight and then I'm going to actually test fit the skid plate to make sure that um, the height is still going to work with the uh, transmission mount and everything. As you can see I am fighting some clearance issues. I've got one there and my skid plate isn't even all the way up yet. Plus it looks like I'm hitting the skid plate right there and on this side skid plate not all the way up yet. I do have a one inch body lift on this already uh, and I still am having this kind of fitment issue. It looks like if I didn't have that planetary on the front of it, this would be forward quite a bit and I don't think that this would be a problem for most people. I think I came up with a temporarily permanent solution. So as you can see I've got enough room to put a finger in up here. I put some spacers in here then I modified the plate a little bit. I still have a little bit more modification to do to clear this bolt and uh, this should work for now. I think that I'll probably use it like this for the summer. I plan on doing some suspension mods and whatnot next winter, so I'll probably build a brand new plate at that time to uh, fit this exactly the way I'd like it to. I think what we're gonna do is, I, I pre-assembled this rod in here like we did on the bench. I'm sliding this forward and backward to try and make the shifters come up through the center of this hole in the floor, basically. So it's in neutral position, right? And then up top, we're gonna want it to be in the middle of the hole coming through the floor. Let's get up there and take a look. So we want these to come up through the middle, something like that. That way there's enough room to where uh, we can go into low and high up here. So right now it should be in, it would be in neutral. And then as long as this correlates with the rods being straight up and down on the bottom side, this should be a pretty close location to what we're gonna be looking for. So I'm going to mark it to cut it like right here. And you know, this first cut, I'm going to make just a hair longer than I think it's going to need to be. And I'm going to measure from this point right here to this point right here. And then I'm going to cut that tube that it came with. Well, I cut everything to length, got it installed. Uh, everything looks pretty good up top. It's right in the middle like we talked about. Um, these are pretty close to straight up and down, which will be neutral. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these ends in here. Make sure that the uh, camera stays focused while I'm pointing. Put these ends in here and then uh, measure for our all thread to connect the transfer case to the shifters. Now, 
After we install these little ends, um, we're going to put these retaining clips on. It's just a little clip that just slide in there and it helps keep these, this end from slipping off. So I threaded it into the upper side here first. Then I'm going to thread our rod ends into the bottom. Once I see that these shifters are straight up and down right here, then I'm going to put our retaining clip on and then I'll probably go up and start pushing and pulling and see if I can get this to go in and out of high and low. So when we shift these back, lots of room. Shift them all the way forward, a little less room. So you can see it's contacting the sheet metal a little right there, so I'm gonna trim that away, and then we'll install our boot. And once we get all that installed, we'll refit the center console, make sure everything fits, and we'll install these knobs and measure for some drive shafts. So what I'm gonna do is when you take a measurement, I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. You take your tape measure, I go to the fate whenever you have this style of yoke, that's like almost perfect center line for your U-joint. So I press it onto the face of this, and then I pull the tape all the way out, and I measure to the face of this. So let's see, I don't really have a good tripod or anything to fit underneath the Jeep, so I'm going to try and do this off of my chest and see if you guys can see what I'm talking about here. So. Looks like we're at mm, 42 and three quarter, 43 somewhere in there. So what I'm gonna do is take this information, get a hold of Adam's drive shaft, and uh, tell them what I need. Tell them, you know, see what they recommend. If there's any other upgrades that they think I need, uh, and I'm gonna order up some yokes, order up some drive shafts, and get them installed. Hey, we got our drive shafts and yokes. Woohoo! Let's take a look at these. Here's our old drive shaft, 1310. Here's the new drive shaft, 1410. This is what they recommended at Adams um, because of the torque of the diesel and me just destroying these 1310s. They said I needed to upgrade quite a bit, so I did. Hopefully, I'm not gonna have any more issues like I did Moab this year where first day, second trail, I just completely grenaded the rear drive shaft. It was only six weeks old. No more of that. So then they also sent me some yokes. They got me some 13, a 1350 yoke for the Dana 44 and a 1350 yoke for the Ford 9 inch. And you can see clearly that it's quite a bit bigger. That's gonna make for a lot better durability in that case too. So, yeah, I mean, you can look at, it's just that 1310 joint's just swimming in that 1350 yoke. So I'm gonna replace these yokes. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show you in this video how to do that. I'm trying to keep things pretty tidy for time. I don't wanna have a one hour long video. And so I'm going to slap these yokes in, torque them down, throw the drive shafts in, and then we're going to go for a drive. Drive shafts are installed. Transfer case is working. I just took it for a spin around the block real quick. Everything is in functional condition, so we're going to put it through a little bit of a test tomorrow. These uh, drive shafts are the best shafts I've gotten out of any rig. I, I, this is the first time I've used Adam's drive shaft and I could not be more impressed with the build quality and craftsmanship. So I think uh, they're probably the only people I'm gonna be using from now on. So I got, they sent me a new yoke for the transfer case, which is beautiful. Sent me a new yoke for the rear axle, new yoke for the front axle, and then the two shafts, and, and all of it seems excellent. It all came with hardware and everything. Hey guys, wanted to show you how all these sticks work and everything here in the real world. So, if we wanted to just go two wheel drive, Rear, R, now we're in two-wheel drive. If we wanted to split that in half, we can use this doubler, go two to one. And now we have two low. Pretty sweet. Now we can go, uh, we can take the front stick and we pull that back and now we're in four-wheel drive. So let's go back up to neutral, put this in high, push both these forward. Now we're in four low. This is the same reduction and this is, there we go, here's idle at four low. And this is 2.72 to one. This is exactly what I had before for my uh, four low. And when you're just creeping down a dirt road like this, it seems low enough, but when you get up to an obstacle or something, you end up using the clutch a lot. So now we use this splitter, put that down, I believe. There we go. Now we're in four super low, five, four, four to one. 
So now what all these numbers mean is 5.44 to 1 means that your trans, the output of the transmission is going around 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.44 to every 1 spin out of the tail housing on your transfer case. So it reduces it down a whole lot. And I mean, that's as fast as we can go. Just about. That's like 3,000 RPM right there. There's second. But you can see it's geared down a whole lot more. So for a lot of the trails we're going to do today, we're actually going to use my uh, normal four-wheel low that I had before. But when I get on a big obstacle, we're going to kick this bad boy down and um, go up some rocks and stuff. So let's get to it. So here's a good spot to show why I want to go with a little bit lower gearing. So I got to use a clutch quite a bit to get up something like this usually. So it'll go, woo, hit the bumper. But I got to use a clutch a lot to fire up it. Okay, this will do, not do that anymore. But if I put it in super low, That's our video on how to install an Atlas transfer case in a Jeep TJ. Everything seems to be working great. The uh, one thing to note, the shifters actually seem, they're a little sticky sometimes. It's hard to get them out of gear and whatnot, um, just depending on what you're doing, but it's not so bad with a manual. Maybe this would be a little more annoying with an automatic, but I can just kind of push in the clutch, push it out, throttle it, and it'll, it goes right in. So something I kind of had to deal with. Another thing I noticed too when I was looking through the install instructions last night was that there's three bolts in the beginning of this video that uh, <clears throat> that the shift link, the, the shift tower I guess goes into and you're supposed to silicone those uh, to keep anything from coming out. I actually used Loctite so the instructions say otherwise. So if you end up doing the same thing, maybe not follow my lead there. Uh, anyway, I want to thank our sponsors, Advanced Adapters and um, Adam's drive shaft. The products are fantastic. Obviously, the the craftsmanship is amazing and all around. So, thanks for watching the video. Support us on Patreon. Uh, give us a like, subscribe, and follow me on social media. Bleepin' Jeep Nate at Instagram.